Hello everyone and welcome back to Osteopathic Clinical Skills. Today we're going to go over the basic skills of taking vital signs. That's going to be checking a person's pulse, counting respirations, and then taking a blood pressure. We're going to go over the skill of both doing a palpated blood pressure and an auscultated blood pressure. The first skill we're going to approach is doing the pulse. Of course, when you go into the room, you want to make sure that you have either applied a hand sanitizer or that you have washed your hands. You then go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, Mr. Bolton, is it? Yes. Dr. Carlson, it's a pleasure to meet you today. Right. We're just going to check your vital signs really quick, if that's okay. Yeah. Sure. Again, get consent for any procedure that you're going to do. On Deshaun's arm, I'm going to first take the radial pulse, if you could just extend your wrist slightly. You'll notice you have a tendon right here, and then a tendon immediately approximate. It forms a nice furrow there, which is where the radial pulse is going to be. I'm then going to grab his wrist gently, we can rest it on his leg, and I'm going to count for either 10, 15, or 30 seconds. I'm going to take the number I get with either that 10, 15, or 30 seconds, and respectively, if it's for 10 seconds, multiply it by 6. If it's for 15, I'm going to multiply it by 4. If it's for 30 seconds, I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get my number of beats per minute. Most of the time, I will use 15 seconds because it's a good middle number. If the heart rate is really super slow, I'll go a little bit longer. If it's really super fast, I can go a little bit shorter. Once I've gotten the number, which was 15, I'm gonna multiply that because I did it for 15 seconds by four and it gives me a heart rate of 60. While I'm doing that, unbeknownst to my patient, I'm just gonna take my hand and move it over towards his abdomen. What this is gonna be able to do is as his chest rises and fall, it still looks like I'm taking my pulse, but I can actually check his respirations by the rise and fall of his chest and abdomen. I'm going to count that for 15 to 30 seconds. If it's for 15 seconds, I'm going to multiply the number I get times 4. If it's for 30 seconds, I'm going to multiply the number I get times 2. In this case, I counted for 15 seconds. The number was 4, and so his respiratory rate is 16. I would then notate on my charting that his heart rate was 80 beats per minute and that his respirations were 16 breaths per minute. The next skill we're gonna go over is taking a blood pressure. We have our sphygmomanometer that we talked about in our earlier presentation. It has the bulb with the release valve and the graduated millimeters of mercury gauge. We're going to take it, the patient who's already done this a few times can help sometimes, but what you want to do is kind of have them put their arm up and then trap their arm in between their, your arm and your arm and their body. So in this situation, you notice that I've got pretty good control over his arm and he doesn't have to hold his arm up. I'm then going to roll this around and remember that you don't want the blood pressure cuff to be too big or too small. If the blood pressure is too big, cuff is too big, you're going to get an artificially low number. If the blood pressure cuff is too small, it's going to give you an artificially elevated number. And you know that, just really super quick, by looking at, again, this range. When I put that on him, it has to come in within that range, and it does. So I know that this blood pressure cuff is the appropriate size. When I tighten it up, notice I still have control of the patient's arm. I want to make sure that I can see my gauge. The hand that's supporting the patient's arm has control over the stop valve, the release valve. And I want you to practice this with your thumb and first finger so you can easily rotate that valve back. Remember, it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. For the palpated blood pressure, I'm going to go ahead and feel at the radial pulse, make sure my valve is closed, and I'm going to slowly inflate the blood pressure cuff. Remember how I said in an earlier video, if it's gone the wrong way and you don't have it closed, no air will go into it? That's what it looks like when no air goes into it. So what you want to do is turn it the opposite direction and then start pumping it up. When you pump it up, you pump it to a point where you feel the radial pulse go away. You then take it 10 more millimeters of mercury beyond that point and then slowly rotating the release valve between your thumb and first finger, let the pressure out. When his pulse comes back, that's the systolic blood pressure, and once you have that, you can let the pressure out. 
Try not to have a blood pressure cuff inflated on a person's arm for any period of time because it can be uncomfortable. That number that I just got was the palpated blood pressure and it's notated as in this case would be 110 over P. The P stands for palpation. We use this in situations where if a patient is really unstable or it's a really noisy room and we have to get a blood pressure relatively quickly. So the next one we're gonna go over is the blood pressure by auscultation. We have our stethoscope that we presented earlier. This is one of those stethoscopes, as I described, that has the little angle right by the head. So you can see that there. That lets me know, that by the way it's angled, that this is the side that I'll be listening to. I'm gonna use the diaphragm to listen for the blood pressure. Of course, when I go to put the stethoscope on, notice how my ear paces are pointed forward towards my nose, but right now they're just gonna go around my neck in the ready position. I'm gonna again stabilize the person's arm, pick up that bladder, support the person's elbow with the release valve and the bulb. I'm gonna make sure that I turn it the opposite direction because I just let all that pressure out. I'm gonna feel for his radial pulse. Once I've got that, I'm gonna slowly inflate the cuff. When I feel the pressure go away, I'm gonna inflate it, or I feel the pulse go away, I'm gonna inflate it for 10 more milliliters of mercury. I'm gonna put the stethoscope in the appropriate setting in my ear. I'm gonna put this on his arm, stabilizing it, and then I'm gonna slowly let the pressure out. The first time I hear a noise, that's gonna be his systolic blood pressure, which was again at about 112. I'm gonna slowly release it until the sound goes away and that was at 76. When I have that bottom number again, I'm gonna take my stethoscope out, deflate the cuff fully, and go ahead and notate my blood pressure as 112 over 74, which is the systolic over the diastolic. You can tell your patient their numbers, or if the numbers are irregular or abnormal for the patient, you can go ahead and reassess those in 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that they're a true reading. If you do have somebody that comes into your clinic and seems to have consistently elevated blood pressures, another tool you can use is what's called ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. That's where you have the patient either purchase a wrist blood pressure cuff or a blood pressure cuff that's automatic that is similar to the arm blood pressure cuff I have here. They record their numbers for a period of time at home and then they bring those numbers into you so that you can actually see what their blood pressures are like outside in the real world. So the skills we went over today are checking a patient's pulse, assessing and counting their respirations and taking a palpated and a auscultated blood pressure. Thank you very much to my camera person, Chelsea, and also our very astute blood pressure model, Dushan. Thanks a lot, everybody.